Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bali. Welcome to ITFA. Uh, my name is Absaline Hehakaya, and I'm head of cinema here at the Bali, which means that I get to choose the films that we uh, screen here on a daily basis, and I get to work on uh, the special programs that we organize for you, like the one you are about to experience today. Um, this film, The Devil's Freedom, is part of a double bill um, because uh, here at the Bali we curate two films that sort of create a tension between each other or shine a different light on uh, each other's material. And um, just because I'm curious, uh, who of you have just seen uh, The Red Soul by Jessica Gorter? Yes? Okay, a few, then the others should see it uh, uh, at ITFA or when it screens uh, here uh, within a week, because uh, both of these films deal with issues of trauma and violence. And that's why this double bill is called A State of Violence, both as a situation and the way in which a history of violence shapes a, a state. And tonight we are going to watch the film and there's going to be an after talk, not only with director Everardo Gonzalez, but also with visual artist Ronald Ophuis. And uh, you've encountered some of his works here on the screen already. And um, I'm very curious to know uh, what, he's, uh, what he's thinking about uh, Devil's Freedom. And we're go all going to find out. And this talk is going to be moderated by Sarah Sluimer. She's a publicist and uh, an author. So enjoy the film, although that might not be uh, the right uh, choice, of, choice of words, but um, still, I hope you have a thought-provoking screening experience and hope to see you in the Bali again. Welcome at the, um, maybe I, I can maybe call it aftermath of uh, Devil's Freedom. Uh, I'd like to give a warm welcome first at the director of the movie, Everardo Gonzalez. <laughs> and also at Ro Ronald Ophuis, who will be joining us, a uh, uh, Dutch painter, for this conversation. Um, we had some paintings of him, maybe as some sort of introduction. Yeah. Well. They will be here any minute. Uh, my name is Sarah Sluimer. Um, well, uh, my first question is, uh, well, I, maybe I should introduce his work to you, uh, and he has just seen your movie, but maybe not everybody knows Ronald in the audience. Um, Ronald, you are a painter, and in your work, as in uh, Devil's Freedom, violence takes a central place. And in some way, and maybe I'm, I'm jumping too, too soon at conclusions, so correct me if I'm wrong, but in your work, you are invited to not only uh, feel compassion for the victims, but also uh, uh, you have a chance of identifying yourself with the uh, uh, perpetrators. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, well, but let me start with you, Everardo. Um, my first question is, is there a way out of this circle of violence for Mexico? Well, um, I think that is not a, a matter only for Mexico. And really, I don't find a way out. I do believe that it's part of, huma of uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. and in the in Mexico context, well, it's a bit complicated because it's also economy and power, political power and a huge struggle in the middle of it. So, uh, violence is something that we have always lived with. Yes. This is maybe only the moment of violence that my generation had to face. Uh, before my father had to face other more political violence. And before that, my grandmother lived another a revolution, we had the church in between, and my grand-grandfather before lived the Mexican Revolution, and that's how it goes. So, violence and Mexico are kind of as synonymous. Okay. So, and our history is in a way supported through blood. So, I don't think there's a way, an easy way out. 
because I do believe that it's part of the of societies and human and humanity. And you 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 are living in Mexico right now because yes. I couldn't. Okay, and is violence uh, also a, a, a daily part of your life or, or, or your family's life? Yes, uh, these are small scenes that I have showed you. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a portraying how the common things for the rest of the people for us have a different meaning, which is always uh, the feeling, the sense that something, the tragedy has occurred or will happen soon. Mm -hmm. So we have a very limited freedom. We as a society, because we are a society of, of consumption as well, have in a way a, a belief that we are free and that we are okay. But we, when, when we visit other countries, other societies, more peaceful societies, then we realize that life has been uh, touched in every, in every, mm -hmm. in every side of yeah. our society. Sending kids to school, uh, sharing location with families. Um, for example, we as families have certain protocols in order to face a shooting. Uh, kids in school uh, face those situations as well. So, yes, of course, it uh, has touched the daily life in in my country. Yeah. Are you are you afraid sometimes? Is there fear in your life? Yes, always. Yes, uh, I, I can face it. Uh, but uh, of course, it has been changing. Before that, everyone was a bit scared of of kidnapping, for example. Mm. And, uh, but then uh, violence became more sophisticated. And uh, yeah, we do fear, we do not live like in panic, but there's always a bit of a paranoid in our, inserted in our brains. So yeah, for sure, it's, it will depend where I am. Yeah, okay. Know? Yeah, and maybe this is some form of bad psychology, but, but was this a movie in some way uh, did it also represent a way of overcoming your fears? Yes. Yeah? But uh, maybe it's the only possibility to face compassion. Yeah. Yes, yes exactly. So did you find compassion? Um, because in some, we've, we can find it as, as, as an audience. But how, how did you, when you were talking to like the, the perpetrators, what did happen with you? How, how did you go into the conversation and how did you yeah. leave? Well, the thing is that for me it was very relevant to hear their side of the story because they have never been asked. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I choose not uh, the powerful paper traders, but the ones who pull the triggers, which in my opinion are victims as well yeah. uh, for a very, uh, uh, for a system that mm -hmm. uh, horrifies uh, yeah. people. So they are pulling the triggers in a way because they are, they, they are horrorized. They are threatened as well. And because they, sometimes it's a cycle that never ends. Most yeah. of them uh, have a brother who had, has been murdered and then they want to, they want revenge. Yeah. And they jump into it, and once they pull the trigger, as they say, it's not coming back. The same thing with the soldiers. I think that the generals, for example, maybe they are uh, people who can make choices. But when you are part of the obedience, of the obedient ones, then uh, there's no an easy way out. The same when you are a lower police officer. You have to do it because yeah. you fear your commanders and you feel uh, your superiors as well. So what I felt was, uh, was of course, it was shocking mm. because I felt coldness in the, in the things that they were saying. But I think that I am very, um, I have a huge privilege that I'm sharing with you, which is maybe the first moment when a kid that pulls a trigger uh, make a reflection about the harm he is provoking to society and to mothers and uh, to kids as well. And I think that's one of the privileges of making films, yeah. Yeah, and in some way, 
after I saw this uh, film, I thought, well, there's n there, the moral judgment uh, yeah. that normally you have when it comes to violence, that, that has gone when you have seen this. And also, it's like, you, 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 even as an audience, you get really desperate because even the small kids say, well, if I, I will have my revenge. Um, did, you, did you come to think of violence as, as some kind of human state without a moral uh, yes. Uh, judgment? Yes, I think that it's a human state. And uh, for me, the, the distance of moral, uh, with moral just, uh, judgment is because I hope that soon in Mexico we create the, what we know as the commissions of truth. Yeah. So we, in a way, can talk about what happened and what is going on now. And I hope it's a binational yeah. commission that includes the USA uh, victims as well, and also the talk about the corruption in the US, because we are sharing the problem. And I hope that uh, only the victims are asked to give their opinion or their vote or whatever. Uh, so in a way, this film is it's just a small share of, uh, <clears throat> of our reality there. And uh, what I do believe that of the way that we must face mm. the situation, because if it is only by pointing the finger in my country and maybe in all Latin America, only the poor people pay for with prison. Yeah. It's not the power who pays for prison, or, or not even with murder. Sometimes, but not not always. And maybe this movie is this a, maybe the first step. Uh, it's like some kind of tryout for a reconciliation process. Yes. Although you never put the perpetrators and the victims in one room, yes. but it feels like, and also because of the masks, because of the anonymity, like you have given, like you try to give some kind of example, yes. maybe for, is that? Yes, and also because we are societies, we, we put a face to evil. Yeah. Because media, in a way, have uh, always yeah. tell us how the bad guys look. Yeah. And then when you see a preppy kid that uh, has committed murder in a cold blood, then you realize that we all are capable yeah. to commit atrocities. So that's the main point of, uh, of this. I was really uh, inspired in a way of the things that were going on in Colombia mm -hmm. when they were discussing the possibilities of uh, forgiveness with the FARC, with the FARC, the guerrilla virus, and then it became politic. And uh, so that's what I found out. Uh, also looking at the uh, El Salvador civil war which lasted 12 years and then they decided to, to forgive some of them. Yes. The same thing happens in Argentina. I know it is complex, yeah. but we don't have enough prisons in order to put all the kids yeah. inside them. Yeah. And you, Ronald, you, you show the actual act of violence uh, and you show the faces, mm. you know, because the faces in your work are very important. Is that true? Because you also do the, the character studies of the faces with the actors and you, you make it very personal. Every face is different. Mm -hmm. you may... Can I go sit there? Yeah. No, no, no. No, yes, yes. no, I will come back oh, just okay. to take a oh, look. Oh, just to design. take a look, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, so what is, um, has your work, because you, you made these paintings all after the, the, the wars. Mm -hmm. you, so, so you made a, a painting of Sierra Leone after the war and the Holocaust, of course, after the Holocaust. Um, is there some hope of reconciliation in your work as well, or is that not your aim? For yes and no. Um, I, well, let's first start with um, the first thing that you that you mentioned. Uh, if you, are you interested in victims or are you interested in perpetrators? Well, when I was a child and uh, I was raised as a Catholic, and we always went to church, and I was always watching the uh, Christ on the cross. And then at a certain moment, I thought, well, it's too easy um, to identify yourself with Christ because he's uh, the victim and the victim is in a way always holy. Mm. And that will not solve any problem uh, uh, considering violence. So you have to step out of that uh, frame and 
you also have to step out of the, let's say, the moral frame. You have to think beyond or behind uh, morality. Otherwise, you, uh, it doesn't come further. And exactly what Eduardo said, um, I wanted to create a kind of stage, a kind of theater, and to involve people. And then um, the audience starts to look and to judge and to investigate themselves. What would they do in, in situations like this? Yeah. And are you in some way, because you, you, I, I read somewhere that you were always more interested in Pontius Pilatus than in, in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So is it also like a personal fascination of, of evil, of, of violence? Well, it's a different emotion. And I couldn't neglect the emotion that I had for the people uh, at that time who were screaming for the execution of, uh, of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, but do you understand in some way, is, is maybe there's no evil at all, like uh, what uh, Everardo said, that uh, anyone can be uh, the one holding the gun. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, 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 what you, you are doing, is it like investigating this state of humanity? Yes, and also uh, trying to find out why people are doing things like this. And what's your answer? Uh, well, there are lots of different reasons. I mean, poverty can be a reason, pressure can be a reason. So, for instance, in uh, the child soldiers right, that I interviewed in Sierra Leone, um, most of the violence that they did was because of uh, there was no hierarchy in the in the rebel army. So, the more cruel you were, the higher your uh, level would be in the army. That means that meant that you uh, didn't have to fight in the front line. So, it yeah. was safer to be cruel in a yeah. way to your to your uh, opponents. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I also wanted to find out why they did certain kind of tortures. Yeah. So, for instance, now you see this, uh, one of these paintings is about um, um, a pregnant woman who's um, having a bet about her, if she's pregnant from a boy or a girl, and then immediately say, they, they cut her open and but in that painting, it's especially the title, the, mm -hmm. the bat, is it a boy or a girl? What, what makes it even more uh, uh, shocking? Or uh, is it the thing you do more often, that you use the title to...? Yeah, because you can't show everything. You know, if in, um, first I wanted to try to paint it afterwards, so that you would see the photos. That's too heavy. And like, uh, what I really admire about uh, the movie that we saw is that... Um, I once did a project with Turn Footer, which is a war journalist, yeah. and he also made a lot of pictures about the drug war in uh, Mexico. But he only showed the, uh, um, let's say, the results of the tortures, and also um, because a lot of these um, um, drug-related uh, crimes are filmed, and they were put they are put on on YouTube. You know, they only stay there for a few hours, but if you know the right channels, you know you can can watch them and he made images of those ones. But those images are so harsh, you know, you, you, and there's only one emotion possible, and that's, yeah. kind of, that's a shock emotion. So that's why this movie was so, it was almost like a funeral of society. And how, what is a funeral of society? Explain that further. Well, I had the same feeling if, if I was watching a long funeral. Okay, yeah. So it was almost the same yeah, sad, set up. Sad, sad feeling. Yeah, yeah. And was it also, did you have something in mind, like that, like it was a long funeral, yeah, maybe something like the reconciliation, what we already discussed, but... What? Yeah, well, the, the, it is about the loss. Yeah. So, the, the, actually, the first cut was uh, based on the process, emotional process of losing. Yeah. So, but my, but my feeling is that every time that I screen the film is, it's like you feel that you are witnessing a requiem. Witnessing? A requiem. Okay, requiem. So, yeah. yes, you know, it's kind of a funeral as well, but uh, yeah. with another process. And how did you work with the masks? How did you come up with the masks? And how did you uh, ask the people to wear them? I can imagine some people wanted to wear them, but what, what did happen there? Well, I felt that the that the mask could reveal a lot of things and the, the consciousness of, of, of being anonymous uh, gives a lot of freedom in mm -hmm. speech and in testimony and uh, allows a lot of the introspection yeah. 
Because I knew that I was going to ask a few things that uh, they never talked to someone else. Mm -hmm. Only the police officer asked for the mask. Yeah. The, the rest of them didn't ask for it and they said it, they didn't need it. But uh, and, but I, was, I had a very ethical concern while I was wearing, using a mask that I was taking away the face and the names of the victims in a country mm -hmm. uh, that deserves to show the face and the names of the victims. But then uh, I talked to them before and then when they allow me, in a way, to put it in a way, they told me that it was a... Uh, that they wanted to do it that way, I felt released. And also when I told them that I wanted to give voice to maybe people who committed violence against them, then they told me that they really wanted to hear what they have to say. So I felt in a way safe, yeah, ethically speaking, because I do believe that these people are the only ones who can judge uh, what if I was ethical or not. Yeah. Mm. And I, this is a weird side question, but at some point I thought, how many masks did you have? Uh, because more than 50. For, for everyone a different mm, mask. Yes. But then I thought, what, what if you are wearing the mask of a, as a victim of a perpetrator? In some way there was something that came up and then I thought, well, and then you have the tears of the victim, you know. It, it, it would be symbolic or maybe... Well, it was uh, the, the idea. Oh, that was the idea? One yes. mask? Or... Yes, well, not one mask, but because there were situations where we, as you see here, that we had more than 10 yeah. in the same place, and then we just gave them the masks. But uh, they, we were sharing the mask for the, with the perpetrators and uh, victims okay. of violence. Okay. Crazy thing, no? Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Ronald, can you tell me about a scene that stood out for you, for you as an artist in this movie, and why? Yeah, that's the, the last scene, eh? the, the, when the woman takes off the, the, the mask. Then yeah. That was the moment of real, real sadness I had the feeling because it's, it, it builds up the, the movie. First, it starts with the title, and then there's, uh, you only see the, uh, the lines and you hear the voice. And this title, Devil's Freedom, it, it reminds me somehow of something that I read about uh, the genocide in Rwanda. There was this one quote about it that's saying, from, uh, All devils left hell for Rwanda, which is more or less the same statement. And then uh, you're cu curious about these people, and then at a certain moment you have the feeling that you understand all the stories, and then this deep, deep sadness comes over you, and then and these questions come up, like what, what you was asking, how can Mexico uh, solve this problem? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's not only drug related anymore, because it's also, because it's so many people are killed, you know, they, they stop doing investigations, so, yeah. so let's say when a man kills his wife, they can say, oh, it's drug related, we don't yeah. investigate. It's almost impossible. We have official numbers of more than 30,000 disappearances. Yeah. So if it's the official number, then imagine which is the real one. Mm -hmm. So it's almost impossible to deal with it because yeah. uh, it's not only the organized crime, it's not only the cartels, it's the police involved, it is... Uh, it is the, the, the army, but also people that was yellows and disappear someone because he knows that now it is the better way to get rid of someone because it will not be investigated. Mm -hmm. So it's almost impossible to, to make justice. Yeah. And if you are uh, looking at Ronald's uh, paintings, which you just did, uh, where you leave out the acts of cruelty uh, in themselves, because we only hear uh, uh, what, what the consequences are, he shows that. Is it something, I mean, sometimes people consider his paintings kind of heavy on the eye. Uh, what is your, what are this, your thoughts? This is my favorite one. Yeah? Yes. Why? Because I am dealing with a next project related with kids and guns. Oh, really? Inspired in the war kids in 
in Sierra Leone and Liberia, but now the ones that we have in Mexico, because uh, now it is a society in certain towns where people is scared of a seven-year-old boy. So a society that fears his sons is a very, very weird and yes. sick yes. society. So they are, of course, they are tough. And what I see that is always power in between this. Because power, violence is a matter of power. Mm. Maybe that is why it's so uh, male uh, issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a point for the both of you when you really want to turn your back on, uh, or maybe just for a po project, but on, on like the extreme cruelty? Because sometimes it maybe gets, it maybe breaks you in pieces, I can imagine. Donald? Well, there was one thing that I wanted to... Sorry, yeah? But I was surprised that these uh, uh, people were um, sad about what they did. Because when I was in Sierra Leone, uh, most of the kids that I interviewed, they were in their early 20s then, um, because it was almost 10 years later, um, they had no compassion with mm -hmm. what they did. You know, if I would ask them, what, what did you do? They would describe it as um, writing down a scenario for a bad movie. But on the other hand, they were all traumatized because they, they had to go into the army and they know that something happened to their fathers or their mothers or children or, or sisters were raped. And they had bad dreams about that, but they had, didn't have bad dreams about what they did themselves. Mm -hmm. or maybe that's also a way of, you have to survive too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but what was my question again? Yeah, that <laughs> oh, yeah, project, yeah. project about yeah, yeah. Like when you, because you went to Sierra Leone, you were in the midst of it every day. Uh, that's also a difference that you and your career, you, you looked it up. You, mm -hmm. know? you went there uh, while you didn't really have a choice. You're in the, in the midst of it. Uh, or, uh, uh, m maybe another question, because for you it's like some kind of fascination to find out what people can do to each other. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Is that for you as well, or are you just obliged to do this because you have to say, t tell people your story about Mexico? No, of course I am fascinated. In the in the, in, in, in the act of violence, violating the other one, and to and. When you talk about being mean or evil, of course I am fascinated with what, they, what happens, if they feel compassion or not. For example, you see that they are always staring at our eyes. We have uh, all, uh, always eye contact with mm -hmm. them. And that is because I, I met a young sicario in Mexico maybe 10 years ago. And then he told me, that's something that uh, I knew that it, it, that that's something that people says, but when when I heard from him, then it make a lot of sense. He told me that when you have someone on his knees and you have to pull the trigger, you can never look to his eyes. You cannot make eye contact because if you make eye contact, you cannot pull the trigger. So there's a sense of empathy, even though it's. Uh, yeah. Even though there's a lot of evil in, the, mm -hmm. in, 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 in them, because a lot of situations in their own story, but uh, compassion and empathy is connected with the uh, eyes. And uh, so, yes, I'm, absolutely, I am not, no, I'm not a, an activist. I do believe that it's something important that we show and ask what makes us so violent. Mm. Yeah, and is there a difference between the fact that I think you both agree on that everyone can be violent at some point or cruel if you, if you uh, fall into a system or if you are uh, forced to or something. But is there a difference between, are there people who are in their most selves uh, in, in their hearts, uh, cruel, you know, like they, they are having, and have you met those people? Are they also... Or, I mean the real psychopaths? Yeah, no, no, they, yeah, but that's maybe that's like one percent of society, mm -hmm. but you know, the people who enjoy the... Have you met them in your film? Have you met them when you were in Sierra Leone or...? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I met those people. But it's all, a lot depends on what age they start killing. You know, as soon as they become fathers and then most of the time the killing stops more or less. But the interesting part is that sometimes um, the victim also has compassion with the perpetrator. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I interviewed some people who were uh, in Srebrenica and they, uh, and also one that survived this, this mass shooting. And one of the things that, because you don't want to be afraid, you know, you can't um, endure this feeling of frighteningness. So mm -hmm. sometimes you become a little like what this man was telling that, that it was so, that his blood in a way got away. And uh, um, so you, in a way, a victim gives this over to a perpetrator that becomes a kind of dialogue between them. And there's sometimes some compassion in the, in the one that's going to be executed towards the perpetrator. That dialogue is always in your work. Mm -hmm. That's that's what your work is almost about. That dialogue, mm -hmm. that moment. Is that true? S sometimes it is. Sometimes, yeah. not always. Okay. Yeah. And for you, it's it's the dialogue after the. Yes, the and, and uh, just answering that question, I of course I've met uh, mean people, cruel people, but uh, they are not in this film. Okay. There and was uh, one choice. I didn't want to talk with a psychopath. No. Because uh, they wouldn't have a chance for introspection, maybe. Yeah. And uh, because I do believe that uh, we are all, if we are really pushed, we all can be uh, made, commit atrocities. Yeah. It is a matter of fear, obedience, uh, hate. And uh, for sure, a lot of priests have taken the guns and became violent and yeah. committed also atrocities. Or maybe uh, there's a, for me, one of the most strong testimonies that I found here is this young kid, 17 years old, that she recognizes that if she had in front of her the perpetrator, she would torture, torture him. And there's a huge word she says, she says, uh, really strong phrase, she says, uh, I would let him know that I own his fear. So that idea mm. is very, very, uh, it's, a, it's a proof. And who can judge a kid that wants to commit revenge yeah. when she knew her mother was tortured, disappeared, and she never could say goodbye, and she's 17. So she's not quite different from a young guy from the Maras in El Salvador or the Sicarios in Mexico. Yeah. They, they, the thing is that they make that choice. Yeah. They want revenge, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? We have still a few minutes left. Yes. Yes, uh, questions for Everardo. Um, I know that the um, journalists in Mexico are exposed to a high degree of uh, violence, aggression. I uh, suppose that this can extend to filmmakers like yourself. So I wonder whether you had to take certain measures to protect yourself and your team. And well, if you are willing and you can talk about it, I'm very curious about that. Yeah, we, 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 I was in touch with CPJ, which is the Committee for Protection of Journalists. But even though it is not a guarantee for anything in Mexico, every 26 hours there's a, there is violence against a journalist or media. Every 26 hours, that's too much. So, But yeah, we were following some of the uh, protocols. For example, uh, I didn't know their names. I never knew their names. I just know their nicknames. I just saw their faces for five minutes while we say hello. And then they had the mask. And then only two minutes after we say goodbye. And then we never brought, no, we never bring the cameras to the, to the uh, hood. Because we were, in a way, warning the authors 
that they will be talking about certain things. So we flew them to Mexico City or to Texas. The, those who are hidden in the U.S. flew to Texas, to El Paso, and the other ones who were living in Mexico, in the country, flew to Mexico City. And after this interview, we put them in an airplane and sent them back home. So, and then we had to use harsh mails, and never uh, other thing that could be hackable. But anyway, we were hacked in the other accounts. Yeah. So, yeah, we had to follow, of course, because uh, it's a very delicate uh, topic. But I knew that I, I, I always knew that I, my film was not about uh, who is uh, related with organized crime in politics. Because for me, this, this film was not about it. So, in a way, I felt that I was. I uh, was not putting my team, my crew, on risk because of that. Because, for example, uh, we, we we were shooting in the fields in Chihuahua, in the north of Mexico, with uh, very corrupted officers who were with us. They were taking care of us. And the reason was because they were warning through radio, the cartels, that the, we were there and that we were only doing landscaping. So, because if not, it, we wouldn't be safe. You are in the middle of nowhere, and then they don't know what you are doing there. In a way, the corrupted officers were telling them, asking for their permission uh, in order to keep on doing the, the job. So, it was a complicated um, film. Okay, we have time for two more questions, if they... Yeah. Give me you. Hi, thank you for the strong movie. Um, I would like to ask you, as a Mexican, uh, if a Mexican feels that he or she lost uh, his country in the middle of this conflict. If we are losing our country, Yes, of course. I'm not sure if we lost them. Because as I told you uh, before, our history is, is uh, built in this story. So the country is rebuilt and reborn again and once again. It is heavy. It is horrible. But I remember my grandmother's stories where she was a kid in the west side of Mexico. And uh, it's a small town, and she opened the door to go to the store. It was maybe the 1910, and then she saw more than 10 bodies hanged uh, outside his door, her door, for example. And then I remember uh, I have two cousins who were murdered, so. Yes, we think we we are we lost it, but maybe now the different um, reality is that we are sharing the problem with another country, which is the United States of America, because they are in a way bringing us the guns, as we say, we put you the stuff in your noses, but then you send us the AK-47s and nine millimeters. There was a very controversial decision that uh, Nice Obama did, which was putting a GPS in more than 10,000 guns and then cross them to the border so the gang members could use it and then track the guns. And they only could detain two. So we are sharing the problem. Maybe before we were not sharing violence, but now it is a, a problem with a, that we should share. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, that uh, there's a lot of violence in the U.S. and the gangs are sometimes ruled by our cartels. We are good with those things, unfortunately. Okay, last question. So it's an okay, yeah? Okay. Brazil, yes, Brazil, Colombia, Brazil, Colombia, El Salvador, 
Cold War really had a lot of, uh, we have a lot of wounds after the Cold War. We are using the same paths, the same tracks, and, uh, and uh, that's, in my opinion, it's a consequence of what happened there. So, yes, we are sharing, but uh, this is the one that I know. Okay, yeah. one quick last question. Is there anybody? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I will give it to you. Keep it short. Hi. Um, we've been talking a lot about the film, but I'm very curious um, how the film was perceived by, this, by the people in the film. Could you maybe tell us something about that? Have you showed I, it? Or? I don't have a clue. Yeah. No, it's not that I can make a screening for them. It's kind of complicated to, to see them in the halls. And as I told you, I don't know them. I don't just have the nicknames. I know the one who put me in contact with them, but uh, the victims, eh, some of them have seen it. Rosa Maria, which is a lady at the end, she saw it. And uh, Well, it's different. It's amazing, but uh, when she saw it, it's kind of... Uh, she was watching a film. Hmm. So well, he made jokes about it. And he, that's why she's so powerful. She's a happy woman, in a way. Of course, I was opening a wound, but uh, she, she decided to make a better living. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Evrano, thank you very well much. This was the Itfa at the Bali. Enjoy your night, and we hope to see you soon.